New Tool Day Tuesday. Wow, that actually sounds pretty good. Maybe we should start something. Eh. Anyhow, we're gonna talk about this particular tool today. This is a hydrogen torch. It's basically a hydrogen generator and it will allow you to have an extremely tiny flame out of the torch. It's really useful for small items, hobbyists. Uh, jewelers use this a lot to you know, basically braise and do some jewelry welding, so to speak. Uh, but it's a really neat concept. Basically, you add water, you plug it in, you turn it on, it makes hydrogen and oxygen combined, which is called Brown's gas, and you can light a very small flame off the end of this. I haven't used this model yet. In fact, I'm just learning how it works, and we're going to play with this today. Now the principle behind these and how they work is actually quite simple. If you want to rewind your minds back to high school or maybe a little bit before that, in science we learned that if you add electricity to water, it'll break it up into hydrogen and oxygen. Back here in the back, under the hood so to speak, is a stainless container and there's a couple of electrodes in there where the power is being added. So the water that you put in here is going to be broken down into that hydrogen and oxygen. It's going to come to the top of the canister and recombine in the form of Brown's gas. Now Brown's gas is, uh, it's kind of cool because it's basically oxygen mixed into that hydrogen, so it's gonna feed itself and, uh, well, it has the potential of having a relatively large boom if things were to go wrong. The whole point of this bubbler here is to add you a little bit of protection. So basically, if you were to have a flashback, meaning that the pressure uh, is less than the speed of which the flame can travel back through the mix, uh, instead of going directly into this hydrogen container, it'll get check valved at this bubbler. Um, there is a line, so to speak, that goes all the way to the bottom of this canister and you put water in here. Some people use alcohol or alcohol uh, acetone mix. And if you were to get a flashback here, this particular container would prevent you from having the big catastrophic boom because it would prevent that from flashing all the way back to the main container inside, which may or may not contain a lot more hydrogen oxygen mix. Uh, I'm a little bit scared of some of this design. Um, maybe I should have done a little more research, but uh, my my uh, fear factor uh, encouraged me to buy a different gas torch, and this gas torch actually has a flashback arrestor built into it. Uh, so theoretically, the colorful sand that's jammed in the back of this, uh, if there were be a flashback, meaning I shut the valve off, but it still made itself through this and into the hose back here, the sand would stop the flashback. Now, quite honestly, I'm not really sure how bad of a boom we would have, and I'm not even sure how much of a catastrophic failure we would have. I imagine I could possibly get hurt, or at the very least, I would soil my britches. So hopefully this will prevent that. Now that brings us to the final component that you need to add something to that water to make it conductive. Now, a lot of people add potassium hydroxide, and that's exactly what the manual over here says we need to add. It basically says we need 15% of this by weight to the water. We're gonna use one liter of water because that's what it says to add, and one liter of water is a thousand grams, so we're gonna add 150 grams of potassium hydroxide to that water to make it more conductive. Now, you can add electricity to water, uh, and the minerals and stuff that's already in the water will usually get some electrolysis working, uh, we're going to use distilled water, so distilled water doesn't have hardly any conductivity of any at all, actually. So adding the potassium hydroxide will help speed up that electrolysis problem, which in result is a faster creation of hydrogen and oxygen. Also, one thing to remember is when you add this to water, it is going to be a chemical reaction and you will experience a little bit of heat. So you need to make sure you do this in a, a well ventilated area. That seems pretty obvious, uh, but you also need to make sure that whatever container you mix this in can handle a little bit of heat for, oh, I'm gonna say a good 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Also, as always, I will put a link down below to all these parts and pieces. That way, if you'd like to mess with one of these yourself, you may do so. I just encourage you to do it at your own risk. Now, at this point, I have the water and the potassium hydroxide mix in the reservoir. And on the front here, you can see there's a little display that shows the water level is right there. So it's almost to the normal water line level. In my bubbler, I do have alcohol up to the line that they have on the outside. They say fill this up with alcohol to here. Remember, this bubbler protects you, so make sure you do put something in this bubbler. It does say you can use water. I believe alcohol is preferred. There is an amp meter right here that shows how many amps is being consumed as you generate your hydrogen. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And it looks like we're using just about maybe 11 amps or so. And anything between 10 and 15 is, is what you want. 
Uh, at this point, we're gonna let it sit and build up its pressure. The machine should shut itself off, or it should shut its power off, once you've reached the pressure that is predetermined by the manufacturer. I do not know what that pressure is, but that is your working pressure. So we're gonna wait until the machine shuts itself off. It's been about five minutes and it just shut off. I did go back to the manual and see what the working PSI is and it's a little bit above 20, 20 PSI and it should shut off. Uh, and it did, so we are working, we're ready to fire up a flame and see how well this thing works. Now, everything I've read says that it is an extremely tiny flame. However, it's also an extremely hot flame. So obviously hydrogen and oxygen is pretty volatile. I don't know if you can hear it on the microphone, but I've opened the gas up just a little bit and I can hear bubbling coming out of my bubbler. And we have a flame. I don't know if you can see that flame. We will open the flame up a little bit more. And believe it or not, there is a really tiny blue flame right there. Now let's see how much heat we have on that. My unit just kicked on, so it's obviously creating more hydrogen. And this is just a tin can. Oh yeah, check that out. That is really hot. I just burnt a hole through the tin can. And I'm going to cut a triangle because I like triangles. And there's a triangle, a perfect triangle cut in a very hot can, obviously. Now, some people call these an acrylic polisher. In fact, if you look up flame acrylic polisher, you'll see these listed. Uh, and that's because some people will cut acrylic and they have kind of that foggy edge on it. You take one of these and you just kind of flash it over with the flame and it kind of melts it, makes it nice and clear. So it's another useful thing that can be done with these little torches. Uh, I'm sure you could do some small brazing, some very tiny brazing with it. Um, it might be a little too hot to do soldering, uh, but I'm sure there are many, many uses for a little tiny torch like this. But anyhow, I thought it was just a really cool, neat device that uh, would be fun to play with. And I'm sure in upcoming projects and videos, we'll probably pull this out and use it for something uh, well because we have it if you like these types of videos please like and subscribe take a look at some of my other videos and at the very least you might be entertained